So this is an example of what a DNA profile might look like after the technique is done. So if we look on the left side here, we've got um, these little, these bands are the DNA um, fragments. So they've been run down the agarose gel. Um, and you can see even on here, the thicker ones are up here. So these are the uh, bigger fragments and the smaller fragments are down here. Um, and so we compare these bands, um, and these bands represent the fragments of DNA. So the one on the left-hand side here is um, DNA that was obtained from the blood of the victim. So um, this is the banding pattern that we get. Now we got blood that was obtained from um, the suspect, um, and DNA, the DNA fragments um, that we get from that show a different banding pattern. And now we've got some evidence. So I don't know what this applies to or where the evidence came from, but we've got some skin and we've got some blood. Um, so maybe we're trying to place the suspect at the scene or maybe it, this was on the victim. And so we need to try to figure out, is this the victim's skin cells and blood cells or is this the suspect's skin cells and blood cells? So we're going to get the DNA into fragments and we're going to run it um, on the agarose gel. And so this is the banding patterns that we get for the skin and the blood of the evidence. So just looking at this, it's really obvious that the banding patterns of this evidence DNA definitely matches the suspect and not the victim. So this is one way that DNA profiling can be used.